HTJ.tax, the international tax firm for six, seven, and eight-figure investors and entrepreneurs who are living that international life. Are you ready? So today we're going to talk about New Zealand Trust. So I, I thought i will start with a pretty basic question, especially since, you know, the media creates all this uh, mystique and a bit of hysteria about trust. So what exactly is a trust? Yeah, I think there's, there's no need for the mystique um, at all. I mean, uh, a trust is simply an arrangement between three parties. You have the people that want to establish the trust. You have the people put in charge of operating, running and governing the trust. And you have the beneficiaries who are the people that are entitled to receive something from the trust. The, the mm. origin of trust goes back many, many centuries. It's an English uh, tradition. Mm -hmm. And if you go back many centuries, all the landed gentry were inscripted into the king's armies and asked to go and fight foreign wars, where they'd be away from their land and their wives and their family and their peasants and the operation of their farms mm -hmm. for many, many years. And, and often some of them, of course, didn't come back. I mean, the English were at war with the French or the Spanish almost incessantly from 1200 through to 1800. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where the, the concept of trust arises. When the landed gentry left their country to go and fight the wars, they put someone in charge of operating and looking after their assets and their family and their peasants and the land while they're away, effectively mm -hmm. entrusting those people to look after those assets when they were unable to do so themselves. Mm -hmm. So that's the concept of a trust. Mm -hmm. And the same concept still applies today. It's just that we don't have landed gentry conscription into king's armies of to fight foreign wars with peasants. But the concept still applies today in terms of people that want to establish a trust, maybe for their families, maybe for a charity, or, 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 or for many other different reasons. And they want to put someone in charge of operating those assets, looking after those assets, governing uh, those assets on behalf of a set of people. Now, the mm -hmm. set law can be a trustee and a beneficiary, but they would have, but that's that's what's called a me trust. That's where that trust is almost always set aside. Mm. But the set law can certainly be a trustee with others, uh, and the beneficiaries are normally what's called discretionary beneficiaries. So you have a more like a, a description of the class of beneficiaries. So it might be the children of husband and wife. Or it might be their grandchildren, it might be a charity, it might be a whole list of, of people that have the right to benefit, but don't have a fixed interest in the assets. So normally what, what happens almost in every trust in the world is that the trustee is given quite broad powers about the operation of the trust and who they can benefit and who they can not benefit. Uh, it's at their discretion uh, as trustee to make that decision. It is ways and means that the set law can help influence, and we'll come on to that later on. But the trustees are given the entire authority and responsibility of, of owning those assets because the assets are registered in the, in the name of the trustee, and they have to operate and manage that uh, trust, and then the beneficiaries will ultimately receive the benefit of those assets uh, when it, either from income streams or by divestment of the asset to the beneficiaries whenever they would like to. Now, now trusts are used for many, many reasons. There's a lot of charitable trusts around in the world for tax exemptions. Um, but trusts are generally used as a method of estate planning, uh, gift duty planning, and uh, protection of assets from other uh, risks. It's almost like insurance. Okay. So that's the, the simple operation of a trust. New Zealand has far too many trusts, in my opinion. Uh, we have more than a million, reportedly more than one million domestic trusts in New Zealand for a population of 5.5 million people. Now, I think that number is slightly overstated, but even if you said it was overstated by 20%, that means that there is one New Zealand trust for every seven people in New Zealand. I don't believe we need quite that many trusts. However, I have three. Uh, I have one for my business. Uh, I have one for my 
family home and personal assets. And I have one for my personal investment. So, you know, I use the, the trust regime works very well in New Zealand and I, and I use it to its full. Okay, so, so that's great. So if you're a six, seven, or eight-figure investor, entrepreneur, or business owner who needs a tailor-made solution from a qualified team of professionals, we can help you achieve the international lifestyle, the freedom, and even the tax savings you're looking for. Visit us at htj.tax and live that international life.